listen to us chatter. And we're live on the Frugal Crafter YouTube channel. My name is Lindsay, the Frugal Crafter, and with me today is Sarah. Hi! And we are going to be doing a pen and ink and watercolor project. Now, I've done the sketch already, and I do have this available to download, so you can download it and then trace it onto your watercolor paper with a waterproof pen. Now, if you don't have a waterproof pen, what you can do is you can just draw the basics stuff with pencil, paint it with us today, and then go over with a pen later. The pen that I used for this is a fountain pen. This is the... Um, Jane Davenport Incredible Pen, and I filled it with Fountain Proof Safe India ink. So if you have a fountain pen, you want to make sure that you put the appropriate ink in it so you don't end up clogging it up and um, ruining it. So um, I'm going to set that aside because I've already done my sketch, and we are going to begin with doing some washes. And I'm going to start up in the sky. I'm actually going to um, just wet the sky. And I'm just using a, a large Minta brush, and I'm kind of excited about these brushes because I was originally very excited about the Zen watercolor brushes when they came out because the shopkeeper where I bought it told me they were all synthetic, but it turns out they're a combination of synthetic and um, and fur. So um, I bought them thinking they were all synthetic and they were wonderful brushes, but then when I found out they had animal fur in them, I really didn't want to recommend them. Um, but these are 100% vegan, so I'm pleased that Royal and Nickel have these now. And I picked mine up at AC Moore, uh, but they said they'll start having them in more stores later. They've just they've just come out, so they don't yet. So um, this was the this is a um, it's, it actually doesn't really have a size on it. It just says MD maybe for medium. I don't know, but it's about the same size as my 30 round from Creative Mark. This was like $5. This is like more than, way more than $5. So I like the fact that it's a cheaper alternative. So if you do have an AC Moore nearby, you will be able to get that. I'm going to use Cinerous Blue, um, mainly because it's a color I rarely ever use from Sennelier. And I thought it'd be kind of fun with this to use colors that I don't typically use. Um, and the reason I haven't used this very much is because it's a mix. It's got like two or three pigments in it. Um, so I, I kind of feel like sometimes if I start with a color that's already mixed, I'm kind of limiting myself. I'm applying the color towards the top and just kind of wisping it back and forth as I work down the paper. Just so I kind of get the appearance of a little bit of wispy cloud, but it's mostly a clear day. All right, and I'm actually gonna change my screen really quick. Sorry about this, so I can see what I'm doing. Cause right now I'm just seeing a, a blank YouTube page. <laughs> I'm so put together today. Um, oh, if you have any questions as we go along, just type the word question in all caps and then type your question normally. And if it's something that the moderators can help you with, they'll jump right in and help you. Um, otherwise, Sarah will ask it to me. And uh, please try to keep your, your questions for me um, on the topic of pen and ink and watercolor. I'm wetting this area here, which is going to be uh, the grass area, and I have a link to the reference photo by Sandy Bell on Paint My Photo. I can't show you the reference photo on screen just because it's the deal with Paint My Photo. You've got to go over to the site to see the photos uh, because I don't have permission to... I have permission to paint from them and show my artwork, but I don't have permission to show the photos. That's just a site-wide policy. And I didn't uh, think to ask the photographer beforehand if I could. I'm working on arches paper. I did my practice on the inexpensive Aqua B paper, and it really doesn't matter what you use for this. I almost felt like the arches cold press was a little, um, I almost felt like it was a little rough for my pen, actually. I'm actually just wetting that edge there because I had a white spot. So I am going to use um, some Aurelian, which is another color I don't use very often. Um, and the reason I shy away from Aurelian is because I found out that it can brown uh, with time. But um, with this painting, I'm not really concerned with that because, and first of all, I've never had any of my paintings go brown that I've used Aurelian on. But I think I got kind of swept up in the light fast mania that uh, so many artists are, are uh, I don't want to say overreacting because I do think it's important to make sure your work's going to last, but I don't think you need to be um, crazy about it, you know. This isn't going to turn like burnt sienna or anything. It, it might slightly, slightly brown, but I'm going to be mixing it. So it's a very transparent yellow, which is nice because most yellows are not that transparent. Now I'm going to grab some olive green. 
or you could use sap, but I happen to really like the Sennelier Olive. And um, I'm using the professional Sennelier colors, but their student line, Le Petit Aquarelle, is really good. Um, and I was going to use that today, except that's downstairs, and I decided I was going to paint upstairs. I've been kind of on the fence, like, when I'm going to move the live streams downstairs, uh, but it's still quite cold <laughs> down there. I'm trying to kind of streak this on so um, I can see some yellow on its own and some of it mixes, and I want to be able to see my pen. I'm making sure I don't get puddles because I don't want to have backgrounds. This is a number 16, I think. Uh, no, number 14. I think the Menta brushes might run a little larger than what they say. This 14 I would have thought was more like a 16. Try not to overdo it when you are putting colors down. Now we've got some snow in here. This is kind of like a just barely spring type of picture. So I want to capture that. And I also think I want to grab a little bit of pink to throw in there. We're going to be using some unusual colors. This is another one I don't use very often. Um, and it's Opera. And the reason I don't use that very often would be the light fast um, issues. However, Opera doesn't really fade away to nothing. What will happen with Opera is that it will just lose its neon quality. So it'll get more um, like a quinacridone rose when it when when the um, fluorescent dye wears out. You of course can use whatever colors you want to. I'm not trying to like bully you into using the same color as I am. You can do whatever you like. Everyone has their own preferences and opinions when it comes to watercolor. All right, so now what I'm going to do is make up a little violet. I'm going to use, I'll go with Opera, and you can see how neon that looks when I spread it out on my palette there. And I'm going to grab a little bit of that Sinners Blue, and maybe just a smidgen of Ultramarine, because I know I'm going to use that later. A little more Opera, a little more Ultramarine, maybe just a smidgen of Burnt Sienna, because it is a little bright. I have been shedding like crazy. I have like this golden lock here in my paint. Let me move that. Oh. Uh, and now I'm just going to kind of um, work a little snow in through the scene. Shadows on the snow, rather. Hopefully that, does that look too glary, um, Sarah? I don't think so. It's not, yeah, I'm, but I'm still a little behind. So I'll, if it does start looking glary, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you. So I just want to make sure where I don't have, like I'll be painting some grasses in here, but I just want to make sure that I've got something not just plain white um, where the snow is. Because that's what happens, I mean, if you live someplace where there's a lot of snow, you'll have bare uh, lawn with grass growing and then you'll have like a three foot high snow bank next to something, like next to a stone wall or next to some place that's in the shade a lot. So I want to kind of get that in there. Um, and now I think the sky's getting dry enough that I can work on these mountains. And I think I'm going to switch to some flat brushes, and I'm going to be using Zen brushes, the all media ones, because those are all synthetic. It's the Zen watercolor, the soft ones, that have some um, animal uh, fur in them. And I'm going to mix up some ultramarine. I'm going to mix up some Cinnarus Blue, which is almost, it's like a phthalo. I believe it probably has some white added to it. Um, it might have a little cobalt in it. I'm not sure, it's, but it's not... It's it's cooler. It's more well. It's more green, but it's um, but it's not like as green as like thalo or cerulean. It's kind of like in between an ultramarine and the cerulean, I would say, um, as far as color tone. Adding a little bit of burnt sienna to tone that down. <coughs> I apologize. I'm kind of froggy today. I am a little bit too. I think it's the weather. It might be. <clears throat> Now with a, a traditional synthetic brush, you are going to, um, you're going to have like less carrying power, but you're going to be able to keep very crisp um, lines and details. So just kind of keep that in mind when you switch over to, um, to like a natural hair brush or one that's meant to like mimic natural hair, you get a lot more um, absorbency and you end up carrying a lot more, a lot more paint. So basically, I just want to give some mountainy textures back here, but I don't want it to be too overwhelming. So I'm just going in and putting in kind of the shadows right now, 
And if I need to go in with more, I can always, and it, or if I decide it's just too, um, too dark, I can just kind of wash over it with water and then like kind of spread out the color I have there. And then I don't have to undo anything basically. I just do a wash of water over and I'm good. I don't think I'll need to do that, but, um, but when I was doing my practice piece, I noticed I had to go back in and lighten some stuff because I just got too heavy handed. Uh, because we have our pen lines in there, we really get to, um, uh, we get a lot of leeway. We can go a lot lighter and we can work a lot faster because we put the work in on our drawing. I'm going to mix up some more of that. Again, it was Burnt Sienna, Ultramarine, and Cinerous Blue. So if you used a different blue for the sky, use that blue. And if you don't have any of these colors, then use what you have and, you know, experiment. You've got a good drawing there, so you don't have to worry so much about, um, you know, about your colors. If your drawing is there, a good strong drawing is there, you're good. If you've got your values right, which is how dark or light things is, uh, are, regardless of what color you make things, they're going to look good. Just trying to um, get some of that texture in the mountains. I didn't want to sketch a lot in the mountains with the pen because I was afraid that it would take the de the, the focus away from its beautiful rock, rock wall with a really gorgeous texture and that's really what I wanted to highlight. Oh, I also wanted to let you guys know, because I know a lot of you guys are fans of Angela Fair. I've mentioned some of her tutorials before. She has a new watercolor mastery class, which is for intermediate and advanced painters. Uh, so if anybody wanted to try um, learning from a different teacher or you're already fans of Angela and you want to check it out, there's a $50 off coupon Ooh. in the yeah in the video description. So check it out. Angela is such a kind, um, generous person. When I was starting my teachable school, she was so helpful to me, rather than looking at me and saying, well, why would I help the competition? She was so generous in helping me get set up. Anytime I had a crazy question, she was just always right there. Um, we both taught craftsy classes. That's how we met. Um, but she is really, uh, really wonderful. Different styles completely, but the same, same sort of like values and, you know, and encouragement, how she teaches. Just kind of putter around with your brush. Try not to put in um, too much. Just try to kind of look for the shadows. There would still be snow on the tops of some of these mountains if there's still a little bit of snow on the ground down here. So we wanna we wanna carry that over. Now I'm gonna add some more burnt sienna to that. Warm this up. Sometimes it's fun. Like if you feel like you're in a you're in a rut. When you're painting, if you grab, if you have another watercolor palette, or you have some tubes of paint you don't often use, just switching the materials a little bit can help break you out of it. Uh, so I've got this. Uh, I just added a little burnt sienna and some of the opera in here just to warm it and give it kind of like a subtle pinkish tone because I think the pink is really nice with all the green that we have in here. And I'm just gonna give uh, some of that color in here. And bring it over here. Uh, you can also do really easy dry brushing effects when you're using a synthetic brush because it will want to, um, it doesn't carry a sopping amount of paint, so you can kind of drag it across the, the um, uh, ridges on your paper and it will give you some really nice texture. And I think I want to grab a little green too. I'm going to grab some of that um, olive. So if I went in with a, um, a like one of my Mimic brushes and one of the new Menta brushes, it would carry so much paint that I would probably end up getting more than I want in there. So if I, I can go in with this, I know I'm not going to get more than I expect. I can control it a lot easier. Uh, Otto Cano, is there any rule you follow in terms of where to put the white snowy highlight in the mountain or is it just random? 
Well, I look at my reference photo, but I also go with basing based on like the shapes that I drew. Um, I kind of figure like kind of crevices will get some snow. Uh, I try not to have any like too big of an area with nothing. I try to balance it, but I also try to cluster like I cluster these snow areas here and I put more shadow over here and more bare area over here. Things that are in back, I tend to want to make a little darker so they push uh, back away from the viewer a little bit. So I go from looking at the reference photo to kind of also looking at what I would like it to have for balance because you don't have to go just by a photo. You can um, you can improve the uh, the scene too. Sign little bits of the green. And I'm going to go back in with a burnt sienna, maybe a little bit brighter this time. Just add some burnt sienna to that mix. So it'll just be a little bit warmer. You can always add more. It's also with these flat or angled brushes, you can cut like carve around other objects like the stone wall. I can make sure I get a really nice sharp um, contrast there because I'm going to be doing the stones pretty lightly, but also with crazier, brighter colors. And I am going to want to get some more darks in here. So I'm going to go in again, mix my ultramarine blue and my burnt sienna. I'm not going to add the cinnamon blue in right now because um, I think these are going to be a little bit darker. Maybe a little bit of water in there though. I keep finding all this sort of dust in my, in my palette and my brushes. I want to get a nice good contrast with that stone wall. And there's these kind of grooves in the mountain that are kind of cool looking that I'm trying to um, that I'm trying to render. I asked the photographer, I, told, I mentioned that I loved her photograph, and she said she almost froze her fingers off trying to take it. It was I like bet. really cold where she took it. Yeah, it looks pretty elevated. <laughs> so thankful that photogra photographers share their their photos on Paint My Photo because I, uh, I don't have a knack for that. I don't have the patience to sit in a really cold spot and get the right shot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if I can't drive there, hop out of my car and take a quick shot and then get right back in my warm car, then yeah. Even if I could, I don't seem to have the skill. I don't have, I don't, uh, I don't have the talent with a camera. And there's also a chunk of shadow over here I'm going to get in while I'm at it. Now, angles and flat brushes can be used the same way. I, um, if I have the choice, I actually prefer an angled brush for, um, uh, for a lot of reasons, with the, especially with these synthetics, because you can like really chisel in and, and get these crisp edges. And it, when you side load, you know what side you put your paint on because it's, you can put it on the longer side. Well, there's just a lot, of, uh, a lot of advantages to the angled brushes. Probably wouldn't be so much if it was like a like a a natural hairbrush or a mimic brush, just because they're not going to be as springy and sharp. But uh, for synthetics, like golden tackle brushes, I really like to have the angles. Now I don't want like I've got some my hair is splitting apart like that, and I don't really want that texture up there. So what I'm going to do is just wet my brush, blot the extra water off, pick up more paint, 
and uh, and just go over those areas where the hairs were splitting because I don't want that sort of texture up there. The nice thing about pen and ink is that you could like um, have an idea of what you wanted to do and you could like take your time sketching on your watercolor paper. You don't have to get out the mess of the paints. You could do it in front of the TV or, you know, on the bus or, you know, sitting at the beach and then you can paint it when you have a little more free time. So it's, it's kind of nice when you want to be creative, but you don't want to go through a big production. Again, burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And I'm just looking through and seeing if there's any areas I want to darken. Remember though, you will need to add more water when you're using the golden Taclon synthetics because they're not going to hold the water like the mimics do or the mentas. And if you already have the Creative Mart mimics, you certainly would not want the same ones in the mentas. They're so similar. Uh, Terry Schmidt, my granddaughter is a foster parent and I'd like to introduce the children to watercolor. What student grade paint do you recommend? Um, well, I, want, I don't know how old they are, but my recommendations, I have a couple. Um, Royal Langnickel has a bunch of keep and carry sets. They're, they're very inexpensive. They have tubes or pans. I personally like their pans a little bit better. They're very inexpensive. They're probably the cheapest you're going to find. And they often come with like brushes, a palette, um, the paints and everything in a little case. Um, and they, they have different lines of keep and carry, the art instructor lines, all very inexpensive and your big box stores will have them. Um, if you want to go up a step, if they're maybe a little bit older, maybe teenagers, I would go with like the Sennelier Le Petit Aquarelle, which I linked below. That's the student line to this. Um, or Grumbacher Academy, or Windsor & Newton Cotman, or a Rembrandt's Van Gogh line. But when you get up into the, the types where you're buying individual pans, just uh, be aware that some lines may carry paints that have genuine cobalt, cadmiums, um, and whatnot. Cotman doesn't anymore, they used to, so if you got an older set, they might have cobalt in them. Um, but that would be my recommendation, anyway. I am going to uh, go back to a juicy brush here, and I am going to wet the stones. And I am going to wet all the way down over the grasses as well. Now my ink is fine because I used a waterproof ink. Hopefully your ink is fine too if you're painting along. And if you absolutely know you don't have waterproof ink, then you know do a light pencil sketch. You don't have to put all the detail in because as you can see, we're just going to be wetting everything and adding in a wash. Your pen work can be done later with just like a you know a regular felt tip pen if that's all you have that's that's you'll get the same look i think it's fun to kind of paint over the pen but um but you gotta do you gotta use what you have all right now i'm gonna add a variety of different colors i'm gonna grab some cerulean it's so funny two colors go in and out of favor like um, I had books from the 90s, and I think that's probably when I got this tube of Herulean paint was in the um, in the 90s. It wasn't in this Sennelier set. I just put it in this palette because I didn't have another place for it. Um, and a lot of painters were using Herulean, and um, now you hardly ever see a painter using Herulean on a regular basis. I'm going to use some Opera here, especially up near the top because it will give us a beautiful contrast with that green that we have back there because they are complementary colors. And this is a much more interesting way to paint gray stones. And I'm letting the color mix on the paper. I'm going to grab some of the Cinerous Blue. And notice how I'm keeping this really light, very pale tones here. It might look a little paler on screen. I'm gonna look at Sarah's computer real quick. <laughs> oh no, it's about, yeah, on, on Sarah's computer, it looks, it looks just like it does on my paper. On my computer, it looks a little washed out. 
so hopefully <laughs> hopefully all your computers look like Sarah's but it's just you just want a really pale pale look and I'm just kind of just kind of pulling some of the color down because I'm going to be putting the grasses over it I don't want to have any hard edges I don't want anything that's going to have to compete I'll do a little bit of ultramarine here and there. Ultramarine is a lot stronger than the other colors. And you're going to notice that you're going to start to get grays when colors mix. But you're going to have this liveliness from where you see some pigment um, kind of muddling through and standing out on its own. So that's what you're going for, just kind of like a soft, um, a soft look and we're using the juicy brush because we want to be able to hold a lot of water we don't want it to get too dark on us and we want to make sure they blend so any place you want a little more color you can go ahead and add it I really like that pink and I think it's gonna make our greens show up because we're gonna have more greens in those grasses that are starting to poke through but you gotta keep the rocks wet so they blend and I think I'll do a little bit more yellow. And the yellow you can actually extend down a little bit because that's not going to compete with anything you have uh, grass-wise. We're going to do the same thing over here on the other side of the rock wall. Just, uh, I would avoid the fence with your water, but you can pull it down into the grasses below. The Menta brushes are very soft. They're probably a little bit softer. They're more, they're similar to the, the stiffness of a Neptune. They're a little bit softer than the Mimics. But when I saw them at AC Moore, I couldn't resist. They were three for ten dollars on sale. It's a good price. Regular price is only five bucks. I'm like, how can I go wrong? If they're awful, then I'm, I'm out a couple bucks. If they're awesome, then I have more brushes to store. And I'm gonna grab these little rocks too while I'm at it. All right, again, same colors. Start off with a pink. And yellow. How many people do we have painting with us today? Or joining us? We have 318 us? watching. Oh, wonderful. We have uh, quite a few first timers or people who don't normally get on the channel which is nice oh welcome everyone <clears throat> i also listed in the video description um permanent like non-disposable indisposable waterproof pens if you don't know um what to get or you don't have anything i'm going to use a cinnarus blue now very little bits of color here when your brush gets dried out the bristles spread apart really easily and i don't want to introduce too much more water here because i have quite a bit it's probably a little too much paint mary shows the brush seems a little floppy like a mop i see that in some asian style painting is there a benefit to that in some cases the big benefit is just that it holds so much water and paint. And this is a big brush too. If I if I used a smaller brush, um, it wouldn't be as floppy. But yes, this is this is quite a floppy floppy brush. Yeah, like if you were doing an Asian style painting, like a sumi e or a Chinese brushwork, um, you would have this filled up with ink and water, and you could go for days because you just have so much media in there. But it's also effective for loosening up. Was there something else there? No. Nope. Oh, I thought you were saying something. No, I was clearing my throat a little oh. bit. Okay, so now I think I'm going to dry this. So if anybody has any more questions while I'm drying, that would be a great time to uh, to send them my way. 
I just don't want to start painting the grasses and have that, that green kind of whoosh out. I want a crisp line. So whenever you want a crisp line in your watercolors, you want to dry your paper. Jerry Dower, what is your favorite pen and wash journal for travel? Um, my favorite would be the Fabriano Venice book. Um, that's what I use for my Sketchbook Sunday videos. It's, um, it's, I don't, I've seen it called watercolor paper on Amazon, but I really don't think it's watercolor paper. But it's a really um, crisp, smooth, beautiful, heavyweight, probably about 90 pound. Um, so it's not as thick as your regular watercolor paper, but it's about a 90 pound paper. It's smooth. And it's just a very robust paper, so I would definitely recommend that. I don't know if it's discontinued. You can still find it on Amazon, um, but it, it is kind of harder to find. But, uh, but that would be my favorite. If you want to see it, just watch any of my Sketchbook Sunday videos, and you can, uh, you can see it in action. Or go to my blog and look for the Sunday post, and you can see still photos. Instagram, Facebook. Oh, yeah, that's right. Instagram. All all of the all media. the places <laughs> twitter you're on twitter too right uh i am i personally I, I don't like go over to twitter very much personally but it auto posts over to twitter i don't know if um if yeah i think the photos end up over there i would think i think so yeah i can't get into twitter people seem so angry over there it's like they're always yelling well i i'm no i don't do twitter at all either i i can't I, I will agree, like, sometimes on Pinterest, I'll have, like, top 25 funny posts about pets. Yeah. And I'll go and read those Twitter posts because they've been cultivated for right. me and they're funny. Uh, but I'm not willing to go through <laughs> go through all the other negative. I didn't have a smaller Menta brush. I am using my eight number eight round um, Mimic. And I have, I just added some water to that gray mix that I had on my palette. It was burnt sienna and ultramarine, and I'm going in and getting these, um, getting the shadows on these fence posts. And I'm just, I'm being fairly light with it because there's going to be some grasses uh, poking up around them, and I just don't want it to be so dark that I can't see any of that stuff. And now I'm going to grab some burnt sienna, just to add that kind of into the mix so it's a little bit warmer. And I think I'll grab some Naples yellow. And some water because I want it pretty light. I'm going to blot my brush because it feels like I have a lot on there. And then I'm going to hit the um, more highlighted sides. It's okay if they blend a little bit. They should, they're not going to blend too much. Our papers aren't, the paper's not wet. That's a really uh, light color. So even if they do blend a little bit, it's not a big deal. We've got those nice crisp pen lines, so we can be pretty loosey-goosey with our paint. Get a little more water there to make the paint come off my brush. Like I want to add some of that brown right over the gray over there. It feels a little too light. Oh, and I realized I didn't really do anything to those rocks. I wet them, but I really didn't do anything else to them. I'm just going to throw in a little bit of that mixed gray, and then I'll throw in some color. So they're not just blah gray. Uh, Angel T, what are differences between painting with watercolors or drawing inks? Um, drawing inks are usually dye-based, so they're going to be more transparent and more vibrant. They'll be more ten, uh, more prone to fading because they're dye versus a pigment. Um, they may be permanent when they dry, meaning you can't go and lift up any... Um, like if you decide you wanted to lighten something, you can't scrub and lift it up because they're generally, even if they're not a permanent ink per se, they're they're going to stain the paper. So getting them back up out of your paper can be difficult. Um, so those are probably the main differences. And, you know, the light fastness. I wanted, I got this brush and I thought it'd be kind of fun for trying some grasses. So I'm going to try that. And if it turns out awfully, then I can just grab my, um, my regular 
uh, watercolor brush and soften things out. So I'm just going to grab, I probably need to use my other brush just to mix up some color. I'm going to start with some olive green. And I'm also going to mix, uh, add some, I'll add that right to the opera. And then I will grab some ultramarine so I can have some darker. And we will try this brush. Now this is a, a regular synthetic, so it's not going to hold tons and tons, but um, but I'm curious to see how like a brush shape like that will do. Uh, Kiho Geyer, I know sometimes you use colored pencils to accent watercolor or Copics. Have you ever tried using a white that comes in charcoal sets as opposed to standard colored pencil? Oh yeah, that's a, that would be like a uh, like a pastel pencil, absolutely. BC Deeks, I still struggle with doing shadows. Where is the light coming from on this painting? Well, it's it's an overall light. It uh, looks like the light is probably up in the sky behind the um, behind the viewer. Say the viewers here, the light would be behind them and over to the left slightly. I can't show you the reference photo, but you can kind of see the stone wall casting a shadow. But there's there's always going to be a lot of different elements that will that will um, play on on where the shadows are going to fall and and appear. Uh, Terry Schmidt, where do you recommend buying frames, and what do you use for backer board? I use foam core. Um, I usually get that in bulk by in packages of 25, 20 by um, 30 by 40 sheets, and um, and I get I usually order my frames and my foam core and my matting supplies to cut right from Jerry's Adorama. They have a gallery style frame that I like. I've also ordered from Blick and I've also ordered from Cheap Joe's. But it's it's generally a lot cheaper to order from one of those those places. I think. Oh, that was weird. My bristles got smushed together and it looked like it like a bunch had fallen out. That was weird. <laughs> If I only need one frame though, I mean, I can go to like uh, AC Moore and get like one frame because they're always like 50% off or you can use a coupon. But if I need to get, you know, several, then I just order them. The only downside is you have to order multiples generally, like especially of like the um, uh, the mat boards, like you have to get a minimum of 10 assorted. All right, I like that brush, that was pretty cool. I am going to, um, use a round though because I feel like I need to fill in a little bit more. So I'm going to add some, I think I'll just add some gobs of grasses and then I will drag the color around with the other brush. Because I've got some snow in there, I won't lose all my snow. I also want to get some dead foliage in there too, so I'm going to grab some burnt sienna and add that in in places. Add some ultramarine in these shadow areas. Well, by using this really floppy wet brush, I can uh, I can get really puddly paint that I'll be able to drag out. So I can drag some of those out pretty randomly. Amber Kleingen, how do you schedule time to actually sit down to paint? Um, I try to find, if you make it easy to do, you'll do it. So do whatever it takes to make it easy for you. If that means putting a, um, a basket of supplies on your coffee table, do that. If it means, you know, instead of watching your favorite show when it's on TV, watch it the next day on your computer at your art desk. Do whatever it takes so that, like, you want to you really want to do it because I know it's it's so easy to do something that's easy. It's easy to sit on the couch and scroll through your phone versus um, versus painting. You know that's an easier activity. Even though you would enjoy and get more from the from painting, you know just getting started um, can be the hardest thing. So maybe it's setting an alarm. You know, telling yourself I'm going to create for five minutes and then after that I don't have to do it anymore. So it's not so much of a commitment. And then you'll probably still want to create after that five minutes and you've already started. So that's half the battle. You can schedule right in, you know, a calendar app 
if, if you want to do that so that you get a little reminder on your phone. How about you, Sarah? How do you schedule time to create? Um, well, for me, because I do a couple different things, so it depends on what mood. But I find if I get all of my must things done, like laundry or cooking or errands, like I'll get up in the morning and get those done first. So mm -hmm. then I have, like, I don't feel guilty about sitting down to work on something. Uh, I got right. my stuff done. Right. Granted, I also don't have kids. So that makes it a lot easier because I'm only responsible for me and my husband. <laughs> <laughs> so... You know, my time is a little more flexible, I would bet. I find, because if I try and sit down to do anything creative and I know I have things that I need to get yeah. done, I'm not focusing on, you know, going with the flow and being creative. Yeah, that's a good tip. Uh, we've had a bunch of people, where'd you get the texture brush from? Um, that's from Royal and Line Nickel. Um, it's one of the Zen All Media brushes. Um, I got this one directly from Royal and Line Nickel. Uh, I think it's like Royal and Lane Nickel Art. And there is a link provided, correct? There is there is a link to Amazon to one set of the angles. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they do have the sets with the with these crazy uh, special effects brushes as well on Amazon. Because um, they generally sell through like big box stores like Michaels and AC Moore and stuff in Amazon. Google search. Yeah. If it comes down to it. I am going to grab a liner so I can get some individual grasses in there. I don't want to, the only thing when you use a special effects brush is that you can end up with everything looking very much the same. So you do want to swap out and, and uh, work with a liner or some other single brush so that you don't end up with everything being, all the strokes being identical. I'm going to go in with some magenta here, some of that opera rather. grab some of the olive it's kind of neat when you have like a puddle and you drag the uh, liner through a puddle because then you it ends up like blurring at the bottom and it just looks kind of cool grab some burnt sienna because we have some dried dead grasses from last year it's still hanging around I know my cat went out and ate some of them, came up and threw it, came in and threw up on the floor. Oh. <laughs> yeah, my cats have been enjoying the uh, getting outside. They're kind of spleeny though, they don't stay out very long. They'll attempt to chase a squirrel and then come back. Oh, I managed to get some spatters and I didn't even mean it. So I'm just going to blot them off. I think that's, they flung off the liner. So if you do get, um, if you get like in the sky, a, uh, a blob of a color that you didn't intend, you want to take a damp, clean brush and just scrub over it. Hopefully you can remove most of it and then blot it with a clean paper towel. Or just tell people they're UFOs. Yeah. A great, pl great place for a bird right there. Bob Ross it up. Some Canadian they geese. They have a flock of Canadian geese in this one. Oh, that one came off good. That one we'll have to do something with. There's some moves you can scrub it, uh, scrub it back a little bit further. Greens do tend to stain for whatever reason. Oh, it's coming up. I think. Maybe. Well, we can put a bird there. Not a big deal. Uh, okay, so for the rocks, we're going to use a small flat or small angled, whichever you have is fine. And we're just going to kind of block in some choppy shapes. I'll just use this angle one that I was using before. And basically, 
You can use any colors that you've used already. Maybe a little dark. Joe Maisky, is that scrubber more gentle than the Creative Mark one? Oh, way, way gentler. <laughs> That's about the same as a Maxine's mop, actually. Or it's about the same as my old, loved Maxine's mop that has been, been scrubbing for years. Um, I was really excited to see that because uh, anything called scrubber is probably going to be too hard for your watercolor paper. Um, the Creative Mark ones will just tear the, the top layer off your paper pretty much. But this one is really good. Make sure you have a, um, a paper towel handy to blot if you get too dark of a rock. And you're not going to color every rock. You're just going to go in here and there and deepen some of them. And you don't even have to deepen a whole rock. You could just add a little bit to a, one face of the rock. Like up here, I could just do a little bit on that side of the rock. But uh, an angle brush or a flat brush will help you keep a rockier shape. I'm going to do a little magenta. Just really make sure you have it watered down. it's pretty to see that wash from underneath. You don't want to get rid of all of that. And if you're going to bring a color, make sure you do it on a few rocks so it doesn't look out of place. No, it was a little bit of cough. Oh. Mm. Little, 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 uh, little throaty today. Yeah, it's because we had, you know, go from 50 degrees to 20 degrees. I know. It's awful. This time of year is really... It's rainy and cold and yep. then dry and cold and windy and... Yeah, it was really windy this morning. I was like, oh, I hope this doesn't affect the live stream. We're going to do the same thing to the rocks on the other side. You don't have to be as fussy with those because they're smaller and they're further away. Just be subtle with your colors and you'll be fine. Any of these other little rocks that you had tucked in around can be, uh, can be touched up as well. All right, we are almost done here. I think I'm going to take a little bit of this blue kind of uh, muted blue that's on my palette. And I think I am going to go in here and just kind of soften the snow a little bit. What uh, Stacy Brister was asking about the new scrubber brush. She did, she missed oh, what it was. Sure. This is, um, and I, they had a couple different sizes and I bought the number six and number 10. And let me see if I can find my Maxine's mop so I can compare it because um, I've been having a really hard time finding the quarter inch Maxine's mop and that's what I like to use for scrubbing. Here it is. Um, and I've only been finding three eighths, which is significantly larger. So this quarter inch Maxine's mop is like just about the same size as the number six Menta. And um, 
Stiffness wise, the Maxine's is a little bit stiffer, but since the bristles are nice and short and flagged on these synthetic brushes, um, they do a really good job at scrubbing up. But the Maxine's has been really difficult to find in the quarter inch size lately. So um, I, was, I was happy to see these, so I bought a couple to try them out to see if they were gonna work and be a good replacement. So that's what I was referring to there. And I'm gonna do a few more grasses and then I think that will be it. And of course, you can always go back in later once it's completely dry and you can um, add some more detail with your pen if you decide that you wanted to have a little bit more. Oops, drop some water there. And also if you decide that, you know, you give it some time to rest and you go back and you decide that you wished you had it darker, you can also, you know, go in with more watercolor. You don't have to be completely done with the watercolor if you don't want to be. I'm keeping mine fairly muted because I usually work really bright and sometimes it's fun to try something different and to work in a different color palette than, they, than you're typically used to. So I'll like give it a day or so and I might come back and decide that I wanted to pump the colors up a little bit more or I might decide that I really like it. It's fun to uh, to work in different styles and, and try different things and use different colors. Trying different colors in a limited palette because that way you um, it keeps you from just reaching back to what you normally use. Forces you to get out of your comfort zone a little bit. A little bit of pink into that weird dark line that I put there. Call this the triumph of spring. Yeah. It's come sometime. Oh. If you have a really juicy area, you can um, scrape in some highlights. If it's dried up a little bit, if it's if the paint has a chance to sink in, you can scrape and squeegee it with a credit piece of old credit card. But I'm gonna call this done. I will show you the uh, the other one that I did, my sample piece, because I did do that one a little bit brighter, but I kind of wish it was a little muter, mute, more muted. But just to give you an idea, if you wanted to go brighter with your colors, what you would have for a look. And uh, there is the muted version. Uh, do we have any other questions, Sarah? Uh, yes, okay. uh, Da Garabatos. Can I stick a piece of Upo paper on my palette and use it for mixing paint to prevent beading? Um, yeah, you can do that. Upo is meant for, um, for grabbing the paint, so you totally could do that. Um, generally, I find that if you have a paint, a palette that the, the paint is beating up on, the more you use it, the better it gets. Um, and like if you have some like dish soap, if you use dish soap, soap to wash it down, and then you um, go over it with a magic eraser, that whatever that grit is in the magic eraser, it, it, I don't know if it leaves a coating or if it just removes all the coating, but your, your palette will work a lot better after that. But all palettes get kind of beat up when you first get them. And we're all caught up. All right, wonderful. Uh, I want to thank everyone who stopped by today. All of the information on the reference photo, the sketch that you can print and trace, um, all the supplies I used, information on Angela Fair's new watercolor class are in the video description and uh, also on my blog. Um, if I decide to do anything else to this painting, then I will photograph it and post it on my blog on the, uh, the same post with this video. It would be the Friday post, obviously today's post. Um, but if I, you know, if I do something to it this weekend, I'll just, I'll update that post with a new photo so you can see it. Um, thank you so much for watching and till next time, happy crafting.